Hey, what's up? What's going on? Okay, guys, before I get started, I want to give a shout out to a guy real quick. And I know a lot of you guys don't like shout outs, but hey, bear with it, dude. This is what we learn about good channels, okay? So uh, just uh, hang in there for a second. Guy I want to give a shout out to us, I will link to his uh, channel down here in the description, um, is one that I believe deserves to have a shout out. Uh, and that's Colt 45 Keith. The guys, Keith's been around for a long, long time. Uh, he's been a sub of mine ever since I've been on Rise Arms. I think even back when I was Armor Guild. And um, he's, he's one of the guys that's uh, made a channel so he could watch videos and interact with people and comment and stuff like that, which there's nothing wrong with that. That's fine. But it's, um, you know, he doesn't have a lot of subscribers or anything like that because of that, and that's fine. But he has just recently started making videos on a regular basis, and a lot of you guys may not know that yet. So, um, as a personal favor to me, if nothing else, guys, go over, check out Keith's channel, okay? Um, like I said, he just, he's just getting started. He's got probably, what, 13, 14 vids up, something like that. And uh, he's getting better. The vids are getting better. But, guys, y'all know what it's like when you first start out. You're not comfortable in front of the camera. You're a little bit raw and stuff like that. So, um, you know, he's there right now. So, but he is getting better. And so any suggestions or any tips that you guys that have been making videos for a while can give him, I'm quite certain he'd be very appreciative of, okay? So go over and let's give Keith some support. Let's help get him off the ground a little bit. Um, I think he deserves to have more views. I think he deserves to have some more subs. And so, and he is what Pete says is a good sub in my opinion. He will support your channel. Um, you know, y'all probably seen him comment a lot on, on some of your vids and stuff like that. And he, he, I mean, he's real blunt and short with his comments usually. He's in and out, and that's fine. He keeps you honest. So, uh, but um, go check Keith out if you would, guys, and uh, let's let's uh, let's give him some support. Okay, uh, this video here, guys, really <clears throat> was brought to me by an idea. Um, Kimber guy one hundred is the really the one who suggested this video to me. Now, a couple months back, I did a video called "Firearm Conditions of Ready." And uh, it was basically centered around the 1911. Well, he had laid a comment on the Kimber Project videos that I did, the one where I did the uh, did uh, Ricky's uh, Kimber Eclipse for him. I redid it and, and fixed and polished it up for him. And uh, he made some comments on that. And he was talking to a couple of friends of his about some things, and he brought them to my attention. And uh, <clears throat> he made mention that I did not know, but in the Kimber manual, it actually says in the Kimber 1911 manuals not to carry. It suggests that you do not carry cocked and locked or in condition one. And I was like, whoa, that's kind of strange because a 1911, guys, that's the way they were designed to be carried. If you're going to carry one in the chamber, it's designed to be carried cocked and locked because it's the safest way to do it. And uh, he had said that a gunsmith friend of his had actually thought are theorized that uh, the reason they did that was for legality purposes. And I think he may be right about that, probably to cover their ass. Um, but we got he got into talking about condition two and is it safe to carry condition two now with the guns that have the firing pin blocks and stuff like that. Now, this is my Rock Island Armory officers. It does not have a firing pin block. Uh, when I carry this, I do carry it cocked and locked. Now. Uh, but thinking on um, Kimber Guy 100's uh, video and stuff, I got to thinking about this one a little bit too. The reason that they put firing pin blocks in the newer 1911s, uh, if you have a Colt, it would be like a Colt 80 series. The reason being is because, oh, this one is unloaded, make sure it's all safe, so safety salads don't lose their brains here. If this thing, whether it was condition one or not, since this one does not have a firing pin block in it, if it fell, hit muzzle first on a hard ground, would it fire the round? Distinct possibility, okay? Uh, reason being is that when this is pulled back, when the hammer strikes the firing pin, if it, even, if it, even if, it, if, it, if you just rest it on it, say make it condition two carry, which is magazine inserted, round in the chamber, hammer lowered, okay? Even if you do that and it's resting, the firing pin is going to depress, but it's not going to be resting on the primer. It's still receded back up into the bolt face, okay? So what happens is the inertia of the firing pin coming forward and, and, and hitting it 
or excuse me, the hammer coming forward hitting the firing pin pushes the firing pin beyond <clears throat> right here where it's flush and makes it strike the primer. So that spring action itself, would it be enough if you were to drop this, would it go off? Well, I don't know. I've never tested that, okay? Uh, I honestly do not know. But it would seem to reason if it was hit hard enough, it is a distinct possibility that the inertia could come down and cause it to fire, especially if it was in condition two, okay? Now, if you have a firing pin block in your firearm, you have a newer one, that's not gonna happen because in order for that firing pin to be released, it has to have the trigger pulled. So, would it be safe to carry condition two on a modern 1911 with a firing pin block? Theoretically, yes, but you still have one problem. You got the problem and you have the issue of having to lower the hammer on a live round, okay? You could slip, okay? You could come down, slip, let it fire, whatever. Then you have a second cock position. Some people would say, well, if you put it in the, if you put it in the second cock position, would it be safe then? Probably, but still, is it safe to carry condition two with a, with a firing pin block? I would say yes, once you get beyond lowering the hammer. Okay, now, I still contend 1911s were designed to be carried cocked and locked in condition one because they flat out were. Okay, when I carry this, do I carry it cocked and locked? Yes, I do. Okay, I don't carry it all that much anymore. I carry a, um, and my XD40, y'all know that. But when I have carried this in the past, I have carried it cocked and locked, condition one. Was I at danger if it had slipped out and hit the ground muzzle first? Huh, good question, what do y'all think? So that might be a good discussion. So hopefully I answered Kimber Guy's question. In condition two, with a firing pin block, is it safe to carry it with the hammer lowered on it? Yeah, once you get it lowered safely, yeah, it is. It's not gonna go anywhere. But um, you have that contention to doing that. Real quick, the conditions are carried, 1911 guys. Uh, condition four, that's condition four right there. To take it from condition four to condition three, loaded magazine, you load the firearm. That's a fucking loaded gun right there. Okay, to take it to condition two, not gonna do it, but you chamber around, you lower the hammer, slide forward, hammer down, one in the chamber. That's condition two. Condition one, loaded magazine, slide forward, one in the chamber, hammer back, thumb safety on, that's condition one. Okay, now there's not a round in the chamber, but we know for our demonstration purposes there was. But that's it, so hopefully that answered Kimber Guy's question. What do you guys think about it? If you're gonna carry a 1911, carry it condition one, Carry it condition three. Is that the safest way to do it? With a modern firearm, with this one right here, would it be safe to carry condition one or condition two? What do you guys think? I uh, hope you enjoyed the vid, guys. Y'all let me know, let me know what you think. What are your views on that right there? One with the firing pin block and one without. What do you guys think? That's all I got, guys. Y'all take it easy. Later.